Hi, hello everyone. Welcome to Sissy Jams Design Reflections. It's Sissy Jams Flat Glass India who is hosting the series on design reflections. It basically captures the sense of design and the sense of using glass in design with sharing stories with different architects and interior designers talking about their journeys, talking about their ideas and their vision for glass. Let's see and let's welcome a very interesting member from the design fraternity with us uh, today who would help us, you know, shape everything better and help us in uh, sharing the design and the design philosophy of uh, his firm. I will add him before I will just give you a little brief about Sissy Jam. Sissy Jam is Europe's leading glass producer exporting to 150 countries at large with operations across 14 countries and nine, uh, you know, uh, four continents, thus establishing its global presence all across. Uh, they are one of the leading global producers uh, of glass and it's uh, as its main business line with over 87 years of experience in the glass fraternity and the industry uh, having their strong expertise it holds a workforce of 24,000 um, members with a turnover of more than 5.8 billion dollars let me add the person joining us today. I will just say that it's my pleasure, meanwhile that we wait for him, that it's my pleasure to welcome you all for today's engaging live series and session, which is called Design Reflections by Sissy Jam Flat Glass India. Uh, it is basically a series, like its name suggests, that it reflects on the past, present and future of the role of glass in design and also show, shares designers and architects' reflection on it. Uh, let's wait for the guest that we have today. I will brief you about him uh, once he joins us. I'll just be adding him now. He should be here with us any moment. Hi, Suraj. Welcome to Design Reflections. Hi, Imani. It's lovely to have you. And, uh, you know, I am excited to have an engaging session with you today, knowing more about you. And I think our audience will also be very interested to know about your vision for glass and, you know, your expertise, how you came into the profession and, you know, how do you consider glass as a visual barrier or it's, uh, you know, not a visual barrier. Let's, let's know from you better. I will first introduce you a little for, uh, you know, our audience and then you know you can take the lead forward and tell us more about you and your firm um, so let's talk about architect Suraj Mittal he is the founder of Future Concepts Future Concepts was founded in 2015 by him and later joined by his partner uh, and it strongly works on the pr principles of authenticity and originality which you know is a great endeavor uh, it provides interior designing solutions and architectural services with a touch of art that brings life into the structure, which is really nice. The team strongly believes in building uh, buildings that can tell a great about their needs and how their each detail will be looked into. Uh, Suraj was influenced by architecture from a very young age that we know of, uh, which we will know more about from him directly. And, uh, you know, the firm has been designing office spaces to residential spaces and he's also designed uh, spaces for a Supreme Court lawyer to give like a popular feedback um, on Barakamba Road, which is one of the premium spaces in Delhi NCR, which was his first significant, one of the first significant projects, if I'm not wrong. So we would know about that as well. And, you know, he has created a niche for future concepts in the industry. Uh, let's know from him. Welcome, Suraj. 
uh, welcome to the live series. Now let's know from you, uh, you know, a little about your journey into design and uh, you know how Future Concepts came into place. If you can tell us a little about the firm. Sure, Himani. Thank you so much, first of all, for the introduction. So, uh, it's been somewhat a decade now that practicing interior design, and uh, it's always uh, an part of my life. As like I believe I was uh, in my seventh standard when I first wow. did uh, a place in Alora, which is like Asha Temple. So, uh, and the, one of my fact about is that uh, it is considered to be like one of the Remarkable cave temple world because of its size, architecture. Right. So I believe my fascination started from then and there, and oh. then we are just trying to create few how, how we can just create timeline. Uh, right. Right, right. Interesting. Interesting to know about that. Uh, let's know that, you know, uh, talking about your earliest memory of, you know, design, like you said that you started on more like in your seventh standard, which is really interesting. So, you know, what was your earliest memory that how did you get fascinated by like space and its architecture? Uh, so for me, I believe, uh, see, every design is a good, but uh, you only for the great so I guess my first uh, memory for design is that part only and I was always you know fascinated from cars or something like that so just you know see something different out uh, in terms of architecture in terms of any structure whatever it is so yeah you, you feel like you know just some want to create something some by your name yeah. So that is, I guess, my first, you know, idea behind it. That start and uh, get some amount. Right, right. So you know, we know that you know. I would say you're, you know, closing on a decade with future concepts, and you know, what has been your favorite design niche? That I would say, like a niche in design and execution. That this was your favorite. Okay. So. Uh, since now, uh, I believe there are two kinds of really, you know, into it. First is the high end boutique uh, couture we have designed for some of our clients. Okay. So, that we got that, you know, chance to create a fusion, by, uh, that Indian taste of it, the yeah, colors, and, you know, that throw of uh, uh, Indian, like, historic. The mixture of both. So, but that, that is the which you know. Uh, exactly. Recently, I'm falling in love with minimalism. So right. If that is something which is uh, like the need of the hour. So right. Right. My opinion, my like design and areas. Right. So I think initially people were a lot into ornamentation and putting like a lot of things in their spaces. But now, uh, you know, I think everyone's modernized, as they call it, that, you know, they've come to terms with minimalism. And uh, that's interesting. I think we've seen your variation in projects also from using ornamented initially to now. And, um, you know, we've liked both. So, you know, you turning into minimalism, we keep seeing that. So, I mean, you know, since you said, you know, from ornamentation to minimalism, uh, what do you think are, you know, the latest trends in Vogue that are in design? And, you know, every other month they keep changing. But how do you balance these in your design language? Because, you know, you can't just mix the two together. But how, how do you manage to balance it out? For sure. So, uh, see, first of all, I believe every place which we are designing, uh, one client or the other, uh, designing is quite subjective, right. uh, and it relates to every household, if what we are, we are, or maybe a commercial project. Uh, because of that subjectiveness, I totally depend on, on that how the other person looks at his, and, right. and uh, as like uh, like 
like uh, one of my coaches told me in my uh, experience that uh, ki painting ki koi wakat nahi hai so for me any design is it is a great design right i think it's just uh, the matter of uh, it's you know the eyes of the beholder like we say it totally depends on that um you know who's looking at what and what they like everybody has a different vision and i'm sure as a designer it's your duty to kind of you know uplift that and balance that so great so let's let's come to uh, terms with the you know our topic uh, for the day uh, which we are here to discuss basically talking about if glass is more than just a visual barrier right so starting with today's topic um you know i would want you to just tell us a little uh, you know introduction on how you know how do you use glass beyond its traditional role as you know just a window or you know a door glass is there any other way that you use it or have you used it in your projects if you can share it with the you know our audience so uh, uh, definitely uh, now when uh, Traditional ways, if we see, uh, glass is not only for doors and windows, for sure. There are a number of elements uh, uh, rather go for, for you, your paintings, doors nowadays, uh, and your ceilings to create skylights. You know, just any space you want to give it a bigger look, a look, or something, you know, when you just or your place. So, right. I think we're just losing you a little. Um, your voice just goes off a bit. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I can hear you speak, but I can't. Like, I can't hear you. I can just see the lips moving. So, if you can just uh, see once more, if you can just share the answer with us, like you know, the use of glass. uh in terms of apartments traditional use we we understood that you know it's much beyond doors and windows and you know it can be used in skylights and uh, you know can be used in a multi use session if you can just share with us on any of your projects where you've used it extensively okay so uh, where we have used it i believe we can show now uh, i'm more interested to tell something which is now on this so, so we are developing Or in uh, uh, Uttarakhand near Ram, right. all the ceilings and everything, and uh, definitely uh, uh, helping us out in that project. So ceilings and everything are all glasses, stuffed glasses, and stuff like that. Just okay. to give it a that property is like uh, on a foothill basically. So right. the view and everything, it is all because of the glass ceilings and the glass facades over there. so right. i don't think so the glass is only for the doors and windows for day it is just when right. ever you right. feel like right so um you know since it has different forms and that you agree with what kind of glass can be used i would say i mean you know a, for a psychology of space let's say you know it said that it can evoke emotions and moods and you know it can also evoke your visual uh, coherence right? so just wanted to understand from you that um you know can it be used um you know for evoking varying moods yeah definitely yes definitely uh, can okay. be used in multiple ways and as you said that uh, for different moods we use different kind of glasses for your bar requirement we do some reflective glasses in your uh, bar Enclosures, we uh, to use more of a fluted glass or something like that, uh, and uh, small spaces like lifts or uh, like passages or something. Prefer to go with some uh, you know etched glass or a number of glasses out there, and it definitely depends on the mood of that particular area and specifically what kind of theme we are using for that uh, space. Right. Right. so you know when we are talking about uh, passages we are talking about spaces let's also talk about work spaces because you know uh, work spaces is something that you you know it's known that you can't really experiment much with when it comes to glass but is that true like you know glass is known to be beneficial in work spaces so as there is no visual hindrance 
such. So how do we factor in privacy when we're using glass? Because, you know, when people sometimes use glass in workspaces, they use it so much that, you know, everything is visible out and out. So how do you maintain privacy? Uh, there are a number of treatments on top of that. You use frosted glass, you can use checkered glass, you can use tinted or textured glass just to, you know, keep your uh, privacy or you know the theme of that particular year to way and, and plus now it bendable and curves glass also that in adds up a character to it and helps you to you know just break the monotony of a, a basic office space which we have uh, you know been seeing for such years right 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 absolutely okay so uh, is there any challenge like till now that or if you know of challenges that you can share which you faced when you are using uh, glass in architecture and design and if you can give us a solution because a lot of our viewers might be watching and they would want to use glass in their space so any challenges that you face generally and how we can overcome them see i won't take those things like a challenge, but yeah, for few people, it might be, uh, you know, um, so for, for an example, if I can just share like a glass for facades can be, you know, quite controversial despite of being aesthetics. So uh, people might not be very uh, comfortable for the sunlight, uh, it, you know, creates in that uh, room or that uh, sometimes it uh, creates a challenge of privacy also in terms of a vision or something like that specifically in the night uh, uh, you know when your lights and everything are all on so after even having frosted glass or something that reflection or that visibility uh, do take a toss on it so right. that is one thing and uh, like for not facing glasses facades you generally you know uh, have that challenge of uh, uh, heat and uh, sunlight yeah. and stuff like that. So, yeah. the, so, like some small challenges, but obviously there are uh, many treatments uh, just to clear Any it up. Solutions for these, like let's say you mentioned these two things. So, yeah. what is the solution? Let's say I have a building, uh, you know, in that direction, and I would like to prevent it. So, what solution do can you give, uh, you know, on that? The kind of glasses. Is you can use it first is the tinted one it just helps you out to you know block the uh, and heat up accordingly uh, second is you can go for floss frosted or uh, maybe uh, few fluted uh, kind of glasses which again gives you a privacy wala challenge bhi aapka khatam ho jata hai and definitely uh, as compared to tinted to nahi but ha sunlight ko kahi na kahi to wo aapko this karte hi karta hai helps out on managing you know efficiency as well of uh, you know using uh, uh, artificial lights and i think uh, it kind of balances out to give that uh, you know error uh, a, a solution right so great okay um so if you can tell me that uh, you know like we are talking about natural light so how do you balance the desire for natural light and openness with concerns for privacy and security while incorporating glass in building, like, you know, specifically, I would say residential spaces because, um, you know, commercial spaces still not that much because everybody knows what, what they're there for and, you know, it's it's a solution. But when it comes to residential spaces, are people apprehensive to use glass or they want to use it extensively? What has been your feedback? Uh, well, I'm quite open about it, but it all depends that how uh, strategically you are placing uh, glass walls, windows, so that you get, uh, you know, that you're getting like a good natural light along with uh, your privacy and your security part is also uh, right. good. So you just need to, you know, pre-align or pre-plan everything according to it. Yeah. And uh, definitely we do incorporate uh, design elements like skylights, glass partitions, just to maximize uh, the natural uh, light source in a house. And which definitely leads to, uh, you know, reduce your electricity bills and right. some other. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that's one key aspect that everybody would need uh, in these times to save, uh, you know, energy. Uh, which glass really helps us do in varied ways. So, uh, in in what ways do you think that the use of glass impacts the user experience of the space? 
like you said you know that you could use a different thing in the passage and you know maybe in an internal space it's used differently which doesn't really need to be like a glass uh, door or a window so how does it really impact the user experience do you think that has any value for user experience or that wow element for sure so uh, as we already discussed about the mood of it so and yeah. everything in a place if we say Uh, behind every you know decision of the, uh, putting any kind of glass we are using for that particular area a feel good factor should be always there behind it yeah so in a uh, clear uh, windows or uh, glass which we see we generally you know tend to go for that uh, product reason being just to allow natural light to penetrate the space and you know creating a bright and open feeling in a corridor areas or maybe in a drawing room or a uh, specifically each and every space of uh, part of that space and right. uh, like we said that different uh, kind of glasses we can use for different moods different areas so for bar areas for kitchen or washroom specifically and areas like powder washroom or something we can you know use more and more of glass just to create it uh, just to give it a bigger look right. through reflection stuff like that and definitely see glass can also be used as a design feature like textured glass pattern glass are there cnc cuttings and n number of things are there it definitely gives it a, a niche or a, a rich look to a place and accordingly your lighting uh, you know reflects uh, your architectural lights your designer lights all reflects due to that glass only right right so it's basically we are trying to say that it's not a visual barrier as such it is much more than that and you know it just leads you for your privacy if you need that or you know helps you create a niche where you you know for for a luxurious look for a space i think that really adds value and great okay so um you know uh, can you can you just discuss and tell us a little uh, more about the advances in glass technology because you know we've been hearing about usage of glass since age old times i think since you know probably our fathers grandfathers mothers people who used to go to office or you know live in that home so partition was always about glass right that's that's how it really started on with so what more do you think uh, you know glass has recently evolved into when any specific technologies that have come into play that you are using in your projects or you know that you know of so uh, there are four kind of uh, like glass techniques which i am really uh, liking nowadays so first uh, is that smart glass which we all have seen somewhere or the other right. uh, like the type of glasses which we use and it gives you the flexibility of you know uh, that how transparent you want to keep your area right uh, and definitely it helps you to control your privacy part and to some extent your efficiency energy efficiency also goes up in it right right second one that solar reflector Uh, coatings so these coatings you know can be just applied to glasses to reflect sunlight and to heat again uh, which can lower cooling cost in building and uh, you know challenges which we are definitely going to face due to global warming right. so uh, that is one element which i personally like right. um one is that uh, bendable glass so uh, i'm creating quite some new commercial projects and over there it is just like helping me out uh, to break the monotony by using that bendable glasses and then cubicles are uh, coming up with in bendable and curved shapes and round shapes and something like that so that portion bendable is uh, my go to thing nowadays and uh, last but not the least like that self cleaning uh, technique which you know it goes on the glasses nowadays so it just you know move dirt and grime and reducing the maintenance cost also wow. which we think uh, for the facade areas now right. right i think that is one major concern that people face you know how it will be maintained anything that you know everyone puts or they buy uh, the core especially for the indian market the core is maintenance and uh, i think that would solve a lot of issues and problems that people might face and it will not be a visual barrier at large then great okay so how do you um, you know approach in uh, you know incorporating glass in your own architectural design and you know what factors do you consider you know incorporating it? that how do you choose okay now this is what how you would put into glass or 
how it will be uh, you know coming out so how do you decide that and how do you approach incorporating glass uh in context of my approach i would say that first we need to you know make the make our clients understand that what is the uh, requirement of the glass in a facade uh, or maybe anywhere else in uh, their space so and i believe glass is something which absorbs refracts and you know transit light and uh, it adds up to the beauty and you know i believe that it is uh, using 80% of the natural light which you know enhances your interiors and your exterior part also of that building and uh, to my approach i would rather you know say that um, glass walls or partitions can be you know can create transparency between different areas of a space and this can improve communication and collaboration among you know users and fosters in sense of a community also right so whenever you going through when you do this have a look of it you uh, get a glance to see the interior part of it also so yeah. it gives a you can a that communication is there basically to right me. right so glass um is not a visual barrier but promotes collaboration communication and uh, you know kind of flows into any design space i think uh, like you rightly said um great so um you know uh, just want to also understand like you were talking about bendable glass that you are using in your project if you can share a little more about what that project is because it seems really interesting and i would want that you know even um, you know our viewers get to know a little more about one or two of your uh, upcoming projects so uh, we are developing this uh, office in uh, delhi only like uh, in a southern part of delhi and okay. case of it is somewhere around 6000 square feet wow. the uh, which we get from our client that they want uh, their office in a very glassy look uh, like it should be transparent and visibility should be all clear it gives a very bigger and open look to the space right. yet they different in it right so over there that uh, you know bendable glass uh, take some you know eye soothing uh, or i should say like it actually uh, saved my life over there right so we created uh, partitions for uh, reception areas for passage areas we created conference room in a very oval and curved shape just by using the bendable glasses wow so, and this is the only element which is uh, like definitely uh, breaking the monotony over there plus adding a character to that space right right absolutely it seems really interesting and i think we'll keep watching your uh, you know instagram page and your channel more like to know about this project that is coming up to know more about glass any other project that you would like to share uh, where you working with a different typology of glass that you had mentioned like you know if you talk about fluted glass or if you talk about tinted glass any specific space that is acquiring that so uh, instead of uh, fluted or uh, so in fluted glass if i say that the kind of project i'm coming up uh, in uttarakhand so it's a boutique property it's a boutique resort basically and uh, we are creating skylights and uh, each and every roof of it by only using glass and over there we are majorly using the fluted one right. just to get character or not by using a plain uh, toughened glass or a break, uh, non breakable glass so instead of that we are choosing fluted glass over there and uh, uh, the commercial area of it like the restaurant area in it over there we are using tinted glasses or lacquered glasses on top of it just uh, so that jo uh, sunlight ka jo effect aayega wo thoda sa aur uh, different aayega us particular area right. i think it will enhance the entire project um by adding value to it great um thank you suraj for joining us and for sharing a little more uh, with our uh, viewers on glass and that it's not a visual barrier like you proved it to be and it can be used extensively in various forms like from uh, you know fluted to tinted to bendable now and also smart glass used that has been being used now nowadays to share, save energy and uh, i think uh, we'll continue to learn more 
from you and from various designers that join in uh, for design reflections. Thank you for sharing your journey with us and thank you for coming in uh, to Design Reflections by CC Jam Flat Glass India. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, Design Reflections was, uh, you know, by CC Jam Flat Glass India. This is architect Himani Ahuja. Uh, I am the founder and the communication specialist uh, and from One Digital. And we make designs known and we try and share design knowledge with everyone through this series for you with CC Jam. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. It was great having every one of you here.